welcome back to the channel this is nerd world and in today's episode we're going to be exploring an interesting sort of sub story from within star trek that has been touched on bounced around and has various different canonical and non-canonical sources from which to draw on although i will try to stick primarily to canonical although in this video rarely for me i am going to be touching on some of the non-canon sources as well just to explain certain things that canon hasn't explained properly so with that said please like share subscribe and comment down below as well as check out my other channels linked in the description below as well as my new website all of which are in the description and this video in case you didn't know from clicking on the title is all about the Vulcans, Romulans, the Brun, and Riemann and what exactly is the difference between these different species so with that said let's get started with Vulcans Right, so, just so that I am clear, this is not a full breakdown of the entire Vulcan history, or of their culture, or of all their individuals. I may do a video like that in the future, but that's not what this one is, we're just going to be touching on them. So, the Vulcans, one of the most famous races from Star Trek, they have entered the pantheon of legendary science fiction races decades before I was even born. The first Vulcan we saw on screen was the half-human, half-Vulcan first officer of the USS Enterprise, Spock. From him we began to see into Vulcan society and through his eyes we saw into human. The Vulcans are an ancient race who have been warp capable for hundreds of years longer than humans, although their technology has progressed at a greatly decelerated rate compared to humans, taking them over 200 years to break the warp to barrier. However, with their long lives and great deal of patience, the Vulcans get there just at their own pace. The Vulcans, of course, herald from the planet of Vulcan, a hot, humid world where Commander Paul would state that the Vulcan race had evolved on that planet. The species have green blood and are identified by their pointed ears and eyebrows, otherwise they appear basically human, although a Vulcan is on average approximately two and a half times stronger than their human counterparts. This is due to the fact that the gravity on the Vulcan homeworld is heavier than human, however the atmosphere is thinner and as a result Vulcans do, although they can breathe Earth atmosphere, it is a little bit more laboured for them as it is a little bit more oppressive. But their greater physical stamina, resilience and mental discipline often gets them through most things. Vulcans have notably very high physical stamina and resistance to heat as well as generally high tolerances for radiation and other things that would make them sick or injured. This is also partly a mental thing. With their emotional discipline in check, Vulcans can weather severe injury and stress much better than most other species. It is also notable that Vulcans are a mildly telepathic species, although this doesn't have much in the way of range for communication. If they are within physical contact of another being, they can do what is known as a mind meld for a long time, a banned and somewhat suspect aspect of Vulcan culture, but now by the 24th century much more open and embraced this allowed for the touching and the melding of minds of two or more individuals it is also impressive that they don't have to meld with one of their own species although many vulcans find it uncomfortable to mind meld with a non-vulcan as the minds particularly of a human or a klingon are particularly different to their own and takes some amount of mental discipline for that intimate a connection Vulcans, as I said, have a very ancient culture, but about 2,000 years ago they had a vicious and savage war which was fought against those that marched against the raptor's wing amongst other factions as the founder of their society, a sort of Vulcan messiah, taught his people the ways of logic. And although this is often misinterpreted as the Vulcans have no emotions, the Vulcans are a very emotional people and that is actually the problem. They have to repress their emotions in order to prevent them becoming a rage-filled, aggressive, imperialistic society. But not all Vulcans embraced this teaching, which is how we get some of the other races on this list. So we have the basic distinguishing features of Vulcans so far are telepathy, pointed ears, pointed eyebrows, green blood, and the like. So we move on to the most famous Vulcan offshoot species, the Romulans. The 
the Romulans as a people are a culture descended from the Vulcans who rejected the teachings of Sorok and the ways of logic. Exiled from the Vulcan homeworld, they escaped in early vessels of interplanetary capability, although exactly how fast these ships were has never been explored, but they certainly must have been capable of superluminal velocities, at least an early warp capability on some level. They bounced around for a while before finally stumbling upon the planet of Romulus in the Beta Quadrant, many, many light years from the original homeworld of Vulcan. They would mutate slowly over time, becoming a new species that are described by Starfleet as being similar to Vulcans in almost every way. But, although the differences are subtle, there are a lot of them, meaning that Vulcans and Romulans are two distinct species, albeit with common ancestry. They are identified physically as having pointed ears, just like Vulcans, but they've also, or in some cases, although not all Romulans show these on a very pronounced level, some of them are smooth enough to actually pass for Vulcan, they have Cro-Magnum-like brow ridges over their foreheads and on their eyes. Generally speaking, this is how most Romulans appear, although again, some of them are more smooth-headed. They still have the green blood, but lack the telepathic abilities of their Vulcan cousins. They are also not as physically strong and as resilient, possibly due to the fact that Romulus has a gravitational pull more akin to that of Earth, and after centuries, even now millennia, of breeding and minor mutations, they have become a little more soft in the muscular department, although they are still physically superior to a human, generally speaking, but would no longer be a stern match for, say, a Klingon. In terms of culture, unlike Vulcans, who have embraced logic and generally a way of peace, the Romulans, although they do have certain things in common with Vulcans, such as pride, high intellect, generally, and they also have a thirst for knowledge and their curious, much like humans in that way. The Romulans are certainly more emotional, but that emotion manifests itself in aggression, arrogance, suspicion, paranoia of other races. This is not helped by the state being so controlled of Romulan society, with organizations such as the Zat Vash and the Tal Shiar controlling many of the aspects of the Romulan Empire. The Romulans have what they believe to be some form of manifest destiny that they are the superior race and have a divine almost divine right to rule all other species. However, this is often being rebuffed by other more powerful species such as the Klingons, humans, even the Borg, and have also been taught some fairly stern lessons by the Dominion, for that matter. The Romulans, however, have remained a major power in the Quadrant. In the 22nd century, they would have their true first encounter with humans, a species that would remind them somewhat of themselves as did the Vulcans often comment on this, that humans reminded of themselves in an earlier date. The Romulans, sensing the threat that humans could potentially one day pose to their future expansionistic goals, went to war with them, resulting in the Earth-Romulan War, a war that humans narrowly were victorious in, but the Romulans learned in these early days that they were not capable of sustaining a long-term war over a long period of time, so they simply ended the conflict. But they would come back with a vengeance about a hundred years later and so we would see the birth and rise, truly the first rise, of the Romulan Star Empire, not just the Romulan Empire, some kind of reformed empire. Now, in addition to this, there have been references that there was a hundred year long war between the Vulcans and the Romulans that took place sometime further in the past. Exactly under what situation this happened and how the Vulcans were not aware that the Romulans were their cousin species during this conflict was is unknown, but it was known to have been started by a Q. But, other than that, we don't know much about the early days of the Romulan Empire. By the 24th century, they are one of the galaxy's major superpowers with their impressive Dideridix-class warbirds and huge army and vast resources, although sometimes the Romulans can be perceived as something of a glass cannon. Although their ships are very powerful, their ability to wage long, sustained wars is questionable. Their use of cloaking devices is often used to mask their true numbers, and it is theorized that actually the Romulan navy is not as large or as imposing as it tries to portray itself as being, although individually the vessels are very powerful and certainly outclass most starships within Starfleet. Starfleet probably vastly outnumbers them, which is one of the reasons the Romulans don't go into open warfare and prefer subterfuge to defeat their enemies. They consider themselves puppet masters. But with the Romulans basically covered, let's move on to the next race. And this one is a little bit more controversial. 
because, as I said, the Romulans are definitely a direct offshoot from Vulcans, albeit they have tried to distance themselves from Vulcan culture, doing things like getting rid of ancient literature from which which originated on Vulcan. They banned the teaching of Vulcan history. They got rid of ancient Vulcan games, things of this nature. So they would grow up with more of a Romulan identity than that of a Vulcan identity. But this other race is a little more suspicious as to exactly what they are, and that would be the Riemann. Now this one is somewhat open to debate, and please feel free to debate it in the comments. This is where we have to bring in some non-canon information. Now, it is never established on screen that a Riemann is actually in any way related to the Romulans or to, by proxy, the Vulcans. However, it is deliberately alluded to by the makeup department and the director. When the Riemann were invented, they were created to have subtle features that made them reminiscent of both Vulcans and Romulans. For example, they have pointed ears. They have minor cranial ridges, although they are less pronounced than those of a Romulan. They also have minor telepathic abilities which are very similar to those of a Vulcan. This is demonstrated by the Viceroy, although it is unknown if all Riemanns have this ability or just the Viceroy or just a small minority of their population. However, you can imagine that a species subjugated by the Romulans, if some of them are telepathic or all of them are telepathic by now, they would have found some way to maintain some level of control over that. The Riemanns Otherwise, are typified by their ferocious appearance, sharp teeth, claw, minorly clawed hands, very complicated language. It's unknown what their blood color is, but they are ferocious. They are very light sensitive. This is due to the fact that their homeworld of Remus is tidally locked and they live on the dark side. Although there's not any physical reaction to the sunlight, their eyes are very sensitive and are more accustomed to the dark. They also have believably, possibly nocturnal vision, not a diurnal species. They are deliberately made to look like a vampire. This was done by people from behind the scenes, but canonically, their pale skin is because they live underground, and pigmentation in the skin is completely unnecessary for creatures that live primarily in the dark. This is also, again, why their other senses, such as sight and hearing, are so vastly enhanced. Their physical durability and physical strength is also a possible reflection of their Vulcan heritage, not to mention the extremely cruel and violent way in which they live. They are often subject to beatings, torture and murder by Romulans, as well as by probably their own people. They have an extremely violent culture, but are known to be some of the greatest soldiers in the galaxy, one of the most professional and disciplined armies. Their race are capable of empathy, as one of them, the Viceroy, would take in a small human child and raise him as his own. He would eventually become Shinzon. I should also point out that on screen, no Riemann was ever named. The closest would be the Viceroy, but he was only ever named by title, not by name. Shinzon is most likely a Romulan name given to him, but it is possible that it was actually a Riemann name. It's never really established who named Shinzon Shinzon. The Riemann, as I said, were certainly similar to Vulcans in some way, and it was believed that behind the scenes there was an intention for them to be a Romulan offshoot, although be it not perhaps a direct Vulcan. In non-canonical sources, there are various explanations, one of which is Romulan crossbreeding with another species that created them. The more popular one is when the Romulans arrived at their new homeworld, and more accurately the early Romulans, the Vulcans that arrived there first, the stronger amongst them who were telepathic refused to give up their telepathic abilities and were exiled to the planet of Remus by the vastly outnumbering numbers of non-telepathic or less powerfully telepathic Vulcans. They then were forced to live on this dark, harsh world which was populated only by extremophiles that somehow infected their bodies and caused them to mutate even further away from their original Vulcan form, becoming the Remans we know. This also explains why the Romulans don't have telepathic abilities like the Remans and the Vulcans do. It's an explanation that I find a little bit more satisfying, but it's never, as I said, established on screen that they are definitively a Vulcan offshoot, although it is alluded to, as I said, by the pointed ears and general physical description of the species. Otherwise, not much, it's not about them. After Shinzon's failed coup, again from non-canonical sources, Command Captain Riker now would help negotiate a peace between the Remans and the Romulans, particularly amongst the Remans 
who were following the teachings of Spock and trying to find a better way. They would relocate to a failed Romulan colony world and establish a new civilization there away from the oppressive rule of the Romulans. This was all helped to negotiate between the Federation, the Klingons and the Romulans in order to get a better future for the Reman and restabilize the Romulan Empire. Although then the Remans may have actually been responsible for the destruction of the Hoba star which destroyed the Romulan homeworld. But that is all non-canon. So it's up to you whether or not you believe the Remans are a Vulcan subspecies or not. I choose to because it seems to make the most sense based on their physical abilities and description. But that brings us on to the last definitely canonical Vulcan offshoot species, the Debrun. And you'll be forgiven for not necessarily remembering who they are. Not much is actually known about the Debrun specifically. Whether or not they had a completely different physical appearance from that of a Vulcan or a Romulan is completely unknown. They never actually appear on screen and are only ever referenced. They are referenced first of all in the two-part episode from the Star Trek The Next Generation, Gambit Parts 1 and 2, where they are known to be now an extinct race of Vulcan offshoots. They left Vulcan with the early proto-Romulan culture. Some of the Debrun were the ones who broke away and would eventually become the Romulans, but the rest of them stayed on a collection of worlds such as Barada 3, where they had an outpost of some description. Where exactly their homeworld was is unknown, but they certainly had a series of colonies and for a while were a thriving civilization until they were wiped out in some catastrophe one way or another. Whether they looked like a Vulcan or a Romulan or was somewhere in between, again, is completely unknown. But artifacts of their civilization and evidence for them does still remain. It is notable again as a non-canon source that the staff used by Nero on the Narada is actually an artifact, a historical relic of the Debrun. How we came across it, not too sure, because I've never actually read that comic. But that staff was actually constructed by the Debrun, who were in a way the direct ancestral culture of the Romulans. They too were likely those that marched below the raptor's wing, or were simply other Vulcans that rejected the teachings of Sarek and then Sarek, <laughs> that rejected the teachings and then went on to found the Debrun culture. The only physical appearance of a Debrun ever in any canon source that I can find is this one on the Stone of Gaul. It depicts an image of a Debrun, but we don't obviously see a Debrun. Now this image looks basically Vulcan, but then again so does a Romulan and it's not defined enough, it's not like a photograph, that we can generally make out any features like brow ridges or any other symbols or shapes on the body that might differentiate it from a biological standpoint from a Vulcan. So as far as we can tell, they either looked exactly like and were biologically identical to a Vulcan. They were some kind of intermediate step between a Vulcan and a Romulan, or they may have been something else entirely, following a different evolutionary path, although you can imagine just a few hundred years probably wasn't enough time to make any significant biological changes. Although I have often thought that 2,000 years probably isn't enough for the Vulcans to turn into the Romulans, really. But there we have it, the Debrun. And just to throw in an honourable mention, as this race are not in any way biologically related to Vulcans, but were described as a proto-Vulcan civilization, and that is the Mintalkans. They appeared more like a Romulan, with forehead ridges, although they were much more pronounced, pointed ears, and were described as a highly enlightened and fairly logical species that was physically resembled a Vulcan and had cultural attributes that were not too dissimilar to the Vulcans. However, there's no evidence that these races were in any way biologically related. Another honourable mention should be the Vulcanians, and I use this very loosely because I cannot cite where I read this. It was somewhere when I was younger. I'm aware that in the Star Trek, the original series, Spock refers to the Vulcans as the Vulcanians on occasion. Now this, somewhere along the line, either got turned into a book, a comic, or as possibly being a fan theory that the Vulcanians were a parent race to the Vulcans. That the Vulcans themselves were actually a colony of a civilization that destroyed itself and the survivors went to live on the planet of Vulcan and then later would see cultures like the Romulans and the Debrun. But 
where I came across that information, I cannot say because I know I read it an extremely long time ago probably before the internet was a really big thing so I must have come across a physical book or paper or something fact file on the Vulcans that referenced this as a theory however it is debunked by the statement made by Subcommander T'Pol in Star Trek Enterprise Season 4 The Forge where she references the second eyelid the Vulcans have and says that her species evolved on this planet so to her the environment was not difficult however this could also simply mean that like the Romulans had evolved from Vulcans into Romulans on the planet of Romulus it's entirely possible that the Vulcanians evolved into Vulcans however that is just probably a fan theory but I thought it was worth throwing in there so there we have it four distinct races all probably genetically related to each other I say probably again because Riemann were not 100% but there we have it if you made it all the way to the end of this video thank you for watching comment down below what you think of these different races particularly on the Riemann because I'm curious to hear everyone's thoughts as to whether or not they really believe they were related to the Romulans and by proxy to the Vulcans and again thank you for watching bye bye Thank <laughs> you.